you know, it's Marshall from MM4x4. One of the questions we get asked a lot is how hard is it to install the kit? So this video is a quick overview of what's involved in order to install a, a Locket Mate Plus into a 200 series cruiser. Uh, this one is a 2016 Sahara, so it has the upgraded instrument cluster and you'll see that when we come to doing diagnostics, but it'll work with the uh, GXL versions equally well. So installation takes uh, around about a bit over an hour, um, but if you take your time, allow yourself at least two hours to do the install and it should come up trumps. All right, we'll go through the process now. All right, well, the first thing we'll do is go through what comes in the box. So first thing is you get a quick reference card that fits up in the sun visor and it has information that tells you about the configuration settings, which we'll show later video. Uh, you get the operating instructions, um, it's quite detailed, um, it goes through uh, the different use of the LED switch and operating recommendations, especially when um, you're in off-road conditions and when you should and shouldn't use the, the torque converter kit. Uh, installation instructions, so they're quite detailed. The idea is a DIY installation, as long as you can solder a wire and remo remove trim, you can pretty well do this yourself, step-by-step -step photos. Uh, wiring diagrams, uh, the wiring for the uh, pre-2015 and the post-2015 facelift are very similar uh, except for the colour of the wires, so there's a few tips there. Comes with the harness that goes to the ECU for to, to override the control of the lockup. There's the control unit itself which has the computer and the relays, the LED switch so you can see the status of lockup and also control the unit. And then there's some ODB2 cables. The suggested location is just up here above your, drum, your left foot. And first step is to remove the trim. Now that can be done with uh, a trim removal tool. Uh, essentially just clips off. You can see there are various clips that hold it in place. And the first step is to get the cable that goes to the ECU and we'll, uh, we'll install that. Now this car already has the kit installed so basically I'm just going through with you the process that you need to follow. So this is the harness to the ECU that goes into the, the computer, the control module. This cable essentially just goes in through here, out the other side of the transmission tunnel and eventually goes up to the, uh, through the firewall to the engine bay and the resistor is uh, mounted onto a bit of metal so you pull back the, the carpet you see the control unit's already installed there you pull back the carpet and there you can just drill the, the resistor in onto a metal surface here it doesn't get very hot um, the design of the unit is such that it will switch control of the uh, solenoid across back to the factory computer uh, whenever it wants to drive it so this resistor is more used for um, sometimes in flex lockup and, uh, and when it wants to override. It's more used for transitory uh, events. So on the passenger side the cable's pulled through and then we're going to route it up through the firewall into the engine bay. This bit of trim comes down, there's four little clips and you just, they're just done with your finger. You can use this to get it. Just pull down to give yourself some better access. And then you can see that's the wire that was uh, pulled through. This is the one that's already installed. And you basically run a cable puller from the engine bay through into here, tape this to the end of the cable puller, and then pull it up through. So inside the engine bay, uh, that's the point there where you put the cable puller in. Um, if you've got something like a coat hanger, you can use that. Uh, just make sure that you um, file off any sharp edges all that going to any wiring harnesses essentially just pull the cable through so the cable comes through the firewall there through the rubber and then basically you pull it through and then you, you cut it to length now where the cable needs to go and this is where the one is already installed is it's here it comes up under around and then there are two wires inside this ECU connector that uh, need to be cut so about the right length is from there to about where the battery is and then you cut it there strip the wire, the, the sheath back, and expose the four internal wires. Before you start doing anything with the ECU cables, just make sure you disconnect the power for the ignition. 
you know, if you've got two batteries like in the early model cruisers make sure that there's absolutely no power to the ignition and it's worth checking by turning it trying to turn it on just to make sure that uh, power is disabled before you start cutting any wires so once you've cut it to length you've then got the, uh, the four wires that will end up soldering into the ECU harness here now to get access to the ECU harness get your thumb under there lift it it'll pull off and then you lift this lever and the entire harness will come free like that then it's a case of cutting this cable tie that is holding it together and removing this part of the shroud of the ECU uh, there's four little clips which you'll see a picture of in the installation manual which you uh, use to then open it up and then get access to the wires then it's a matter of you cut two wires and solder the ends according to the instructions uh, onto those onto the onto those particular wires that were cut now the facelift 2015 plus cruiser the two wires are exactly the same color they're both blue so i recommend you cut one wire put the the ends solder the ends on and then cut the next wire that way you can't accidentally swap the wires at this end of the of the harness the other thing you can do is just mark one wire uh, with your own little stripe or bit at each end and then you can use that to determine which wire is which so the way this has been installed I've wrapped the, uh, the tape back around the, the wiring harness when you do cut the wires allow yourself some space so that you can um, um, you've got room for error and room to do your soldering and this is the cable coming out uh, the cable itself um, I've put into some black um, protective wrap but that's more cosmetic you don't need to it is double insulated and can handle temperatures well over 150 degrees so if we just look inside there you'll see there it is there so putting the issue harness back in just line it up use the clip and it goes down and then this just goes back onto the, the firewall to secure the, the harness away and that's it the next step is to put in the LED harness uh, it will end up routing from, from this point here up to the A pillar here and to do that you first drop this bit of trim there's just uh, two screws that you undo there's a screw there and there and then these are just uh, three clips which you just get your finger under and it will drop down a bit like on the on the other side uh, use a trim removal tool such as this you can pry this bit of trim off gives you better access to route the, the, the cable so you basically just clip it in behind the, the rubber here it just clips onto the uh, the trim and then you run the cable down through here up under and you see it there just across into this area here where the control module is going to be uh, in the Sahara it's a different setup this rubber uh, doesn't just pull away but if you've got a I think a GLX or a, a pre-2015 this rubber will literally just pull away like this if like you might see in one of the Prado videos and that way you can get the cable to route uh, behind it when you do mount this switch make sure you don't put it up too high uh, there is actually an airbag strap that will come out from here uh, it's best mounted low so that if the airbag should ever go off this doesn't become a bit of a projectile the last step uh, put the 8 2 cables in just take them out of the packet and show them to you so there are two cables uh, this one goes to the lock up mate control unit and one end of it goes on to this cable which is a Y splitter so one end goes on here and then the other end is free for you to use if you've got such, like an ultra gauge or a scan gauge if you uh, uh, monitor your car's parameters the other end of the cable goes into the ODB2 port which is located here so you can see there the I've already routed the cable at the end of it and it comes up here so with the trim back in the cable just simply goes up plugged in firmly and then just tidy the, the cabling up a bit through there underneath so that you can get to the control module and then all the connectors are essentially just plugged in the control module you've got the ADB2 connector the LED switch and the harness to the ECU and then this can be tucked away in this area there's uh, plenty of padding it fits quite snugly um, you can cable tie it um, but that's a good spot because if ever you do want to return the unit for a software update um, it can be very easily uh, accessed
If ever you need to remove the control module from the car, um, this plug is in the back of it that goes to the ECU. There's a little link plug that's attached to it. Uh, you basically put that link plug on the end here and that puts the wiring back to factory standard so it avoids causing any error codes. Now the final step is to run the self-diagnostics. To do that you put the ignition on without starting the car so keep your, your foot off the brake. Set ignition on. Then put your foot on the brake to move the shift lever to the sport position. So it must be in sport, engine not running. Then you just push the LED and hold it for the count to five. And then it goes through its sequence. So the taco showing number one, then number two, then number three. That the, the basically six tests. And so long as the speedo stays at about 42, that means it's passed the test. So there you go, that's the self-diagnostics done and that's all passed. Now to simulate an error caused by say a wiring fault, uh, I'm going to disconnect the cable to the harness, to the ECU harness. And by unplugging this cable, the factory computer and uh, lockup mate can no longer control the solenoid. Now if we run the diagnostics again now, you'll see the implications of that. Ignition on, foot off the brake, put it into sport mode, hold and count to five, release, and you'll see parameter one and two and three are okay. And there you see number four, five, and six are zero which indicates that there's a problem. There's a new feature built into uh, Lockit Mate Plus now, which is the ability to reset the engine trouble code. So if we were to take the car for a drive now with that cable unplugged, it would end up causing an error code. And I'll go do that now and then come back and I'll show you how to reset it. Okay, I've just driven the car um, up to about 65. Um, the factory computer then tried to activate the flex lockup mode in fifth gear and of course with that cable unplugged it didn't work and it's thrown the error code. So you can see that the the engine error light has come on and it's telling you check engine visit your dealer pre-crash safety malfunction. Now there is no malfunction to the pre-crash safety system it's just that the uh, ECU couldn't control the lockup so I don't know why they show that code probably just because there's a, a check engine light and therefore they disable it. So all you need to do to uh, issue a reset is you double tap the LED. So if I double tap it you'll see double tap engine light's gone off and it's all back to normal. Now that can be used with the engine running or just the ignition on with the engine stopped and it can be used to reset all the error codes. Um, you can't display the error code that was caused uh, but at least it provides you an ability that if your car goes into a limp mode uh, for some other reason um, you've actually got the ability to reset those codes. And if you make a mistake during the installation, um, you can self-correct the, the error and reset it. So that's a new feature we've added uh, to Lockup Mate Plus, and we're rolling across uh, all of our products. Well, that completes the installation of Lockup Mate Plus, and the last thing to do is to just adjust the gently adjust the LED to your own driving position, uh, so it's got good visibility. Now we've deliberately put the LED on the A pillar, uh, so you don't have to install a switch into any of the uh, factory locations which keeps them free and it makes it much easier to see it makes it much easier to install as well anyway the next video uh, you'd want to watch would be the operating video thanks for watching